Uh, let, let's take it to Basketball News, most recent mock draft, basketballnews.com. And they have the Knicks selecting Johnny Davis. So right now we do have Johnny Davis. Um, 6'5", 200 pounds from Wisconsin. I think he's going to come in right away and give you toughness on both ends of the floor. And I think the size, toughness, ability to get to the rim, score in the mid-range, and the defense next to R.J. Barrett is awesome. And I think almost like a running back tandem in football where you got the speed guy and then you got the bruiser, I think next to quickly could be really nice. Let's say one day you throw him um, and Deuce McBride on the court together. Now you're really difficult to score on. You know, I think Davis gives you a lot of versatility, a lot of options, and a lot of lineup flexibility at the guard position. So if he's there at 11, I would be hard-pressed to see the Knicks pass on him. So I've got Johnny Davis there. Uh, uh, excellent in the mid-range for sure. How did you feel about, you know, only the 30% from three free throw numbers were in all that this year. How did you feel about that? Yeah, it definitely tailed off by the end of the year. You know, he started off so hot. Uh, there was a six or seven game stretch, probably about two thirds of the way through Big Ten play, where he was shooting, you know, 20 something percent from the floor, 30 percent from the floor. The efficiency really, really dropped off. Um, what I'll give him, any, it, what I'll give him is he has the NBA size to come out and, and be ready to participate and play very early. Mm -hmm. So I don't think physically he has to grow that much. I think it's more shot selection. Um, a lot of times at Wisconsin, he was asked to put the team on his back. And quite frankly, when that happens, no matter what size school you're in, no matter what kind of offense you run, that ends up in bad shots. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hold it too much against him. Um, he will need to improve the consistency from three. But again, I don't put too much concern into those numbers right now. And another uh, weakness that I, that I see a lot of people harping on is um, the lack of separation the inability to, to really separate. They, they don't see him having that burst. How do you see it? I agree with that. And that's why I think he's available at 11 mm -hmm. and not going at six or seven. I think you've got guys like AJ Griffin, who I know he's not the most explosive player right now, you know, post knee injury, he just has not looked the same, um, you know, since he got hurt and even before a college in his junior high school, you know, the tape was just amazing. I also think Griffin, is in play at 11 and our mock, we actually have him on the board going to the thunder at 12, yeah. but that's where I think like Matherin is a good example that that elite athleticism um, shot making on the move, I think propels him ahead. Uh, let me look at who else we've got ahead right now. I think Ty Ty, I, I just think Washington's going to need a point guard. Mm -hmm. So we have Ty Ty going 10 and then the rise of Dyson Daniels recently, mm -hmm. you know, the top five stuff started coming out. I thought there's no way I made some calls over to some teams and some, some scouts and execs and all of them were like, yeah, like this is this is real. So mm. I think Dyson Daniels has jumped up um, and I think Matherin will go ahead of Davis. But that's where I think Davis and Griffin, there's a really good chance two guys who have trouble separating, mm. but there's a good chance that they're both there at 11.